Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be testing out Bolt's new import from Figma feature that is built on Anima. I mean, just the fact that it's built on Anima really brings my hopes down. Um, but let's see if it actually performs really nicely. So I'm just gonna show you an honest review, very honestly, uh, with three simple uh, demonstrations, or maybe even two, depending on how Bolt does. So here's a website landing page. I'm not even doing applications because I don't even want to go into multi-step flows or anything along those lines. This is a simple website that's done on Untitled UI. They have things structured very nicely. They have things within components. They're using auto layout and stuff along those lines. I mean, I'm not sure if I can do much better than that in terms of structure and auto layout because that's what uh, Untitled UI is all about. So I'm going to be converting this landing page and let's just go ahead and actually copy it. And I'm gonna come, sorry, that's my video. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna basically go ahead and import that uh, by just going to Bolt and saying import Figma frame into Bolt. And I'm also gonna start a timer here, reset this timer and start the timer and see how much time this takes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna show you some other things that I'm going to do. So I'm gonna try converting this simple page into, uh, or using Bolt to convert this into an HTML page. Now again, you do not need intelligence to convert a page like this because if everything is structured, it's already using Flexbox. It's already using certain properties like font sizes, uh, line heights, font family and stuff along those lines. So I don't think there's any intelligence in that because I mean, for the most part, they can just copy all of the things that are already there, right? So I don't see a lot of need for intelligence to convert something simple like that. I feel like Anima was doing an okay job of converting these things even though i was never really a fan of anima and i didn't really think they were doing a good job to begin with but a lot of other plugins and tools were doing a job like this or converting pages like this even before this ai revolution and this ai boom so if bolt does not get this right that would be super disappointing uh, but i think it would probably be able to get this right maybe for the most part uh, then the second thing that we're going to be doing is converting this landing page um, so let me just change that to landing page, which is a bit more complex. As you can see, it has a bunch of effects. If it does convert this well, I'm actually going to ask it to animate some sections here as well and see if it actually does a nice, nice job. So as you can see, we have a lot of effects. We have a lot of like linear gradients on the text as well, which should be straightforward because even Framer can potentially do stuff like that. And we have some tabs here as well and stuff along those lines. So let's see what it actually does here. If it is able to do this and if it's able to animate this, this has a really good structure, as you can see on the left hand side. Let me just go up. It has all of the things that are really nicely structured in terms of auto layout and stuff along those lines. So that's that. And the third page is this one, which is not done really well. It's a much it's, it's a complex page. It's not as complex as the previous one, but it has pretty much no structure, no uh, delineation in terms of which content comes above, which content comes below. Now, this is honestly where the intelligence is required as a human because I've given this particular page to a lot of developers to convert when I was searching for good front-end developers and a lot of them actually do, did a good job because they can visually see the page. They can see, okay, this stuff is above, this stuff is below that and stuff along those lines. They even animated this stuff. So let's see what it actually does. So now coming back to this particular page, okay, so it's deployed it. I'm just gonna stop it. I'm not sure how much time it actually took. So now let's go ahead and click on deploy and let's see what it actually gives us and how good of a job it actually has done here. <clears throat> okay, so we have the website up. Let's click on that particular link. You can also see the preview directly here as well, but I just like to see it here so I can see the responsive nature of it as well. Okay, so things are messed up. This is not really centered. This is overlapping the logos. That's not good. This is completely full screen. I think this was full full screen. So this, or was this full screen? Let me just actually have a look at it in the design. Uh, this was full screen, yes. Let me just update this section color slightly as well so I can see what the page looks like. Okay, so that's fine. This is completely broken. I don't even know what's going on. Where did the arrows come from? Okay, so I mean, things are a bit messed up, but uh, Bolt should be able to clean these things up really nicely. Things aren't centered properly. The hero section is overlapping the logo and there's an extra icon in the FAQs. I think just saying this should actually work and it should do a good job at correcting these things. 
So it's going to fix these issues. I'm again going to just start the timer. Stuff along those lines, but actually let's just ask it that. So, okay, it, I think updated it, but you know, these things automatically. Okay. So that's that this obviously was not fixed. This was fixed maybe. Um, so, but obviously it's deviating from the design. So that's horrible. Uh, make this page responsive. Let's try to ask it to do something like this as well. And I think even the button sizes are wrong. So if we actually go here on the button, the button size here is one, 60 pixels in height. What is the button size here? That's like, I don't know. What is the size? This is 36 pixels in height. Where did it even get that particular size from? So this particular button is this right? 44, I think this may, okay, even this is wrong. Okay, so it's doing things on its own. And I guess, what can I say about it? Um, Okay, let's just see if it actually can make this responsive. I mean, if it cannot even convert this page into a pixel perfect design, I really have low hopes on this page and an impossible an impossibility on this particular page. I mean, it doesn't seem intelligent. I wouldn't even say enough. It doesn't even seem intelligent at the very least for the most part when it comes to converting these things. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. Let's just see how it's doing on the responsive front. Okay, so I think it has done something. Um, and did it actually fix the centered stuff? Okay, it fixed the centered stuff. It fixed the logo, so at the very least, that's good. And let's try to make it responsive. Okay, so that's fixed responsively. This is good. This obviously is messed up. This is good. So I mean, it did a good job. It tried to fix some of those things as well, so that's good. Uh, but now coming on to more complex projects. So I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to go to bolt.new again. And I am going to paste this link. Let's just go ahead and actually paste it. Okay guys, I think this is done. So let's go ahead and actually just try to deploy it and see how it actually has converted quite a complex design compared to the previous one. I mean, if it, if it can lay out the structure well, uh, even if let's say some of the effects aren't there, I would probably, probably be fine with that. But I do not have high hopes based on my recent experience. Okay, so it's deployed. Let's just open that particular link and see the job that it's done. Okay, so it seems like it has some issues with the uh, linear gradient. So it's not, it, it does not seem to apply that. There's an issue here as well. This particular light is coming way from the bottom. So that's not good. The hover effect is nice. We don't have a ho hover effect here. Actually, the image is overlapping. So I cannot even click the buttons, which is definitely not nice. The borders here are definitely not what we had in the actual design. So that's not good. It isn't actually copying the whole thing. Okay, it's masking it, so that's good. It actually knows how to mask things. We have the logos that are a bit squished. As you can see, the logos aren't exactly the way that they are here. This is messed up. Obviously, all of this is messed up. Uh, so I cannot expect it to generate things in the bento section. These things are obviously completely gone. Uh, I mean, we're missing basically most of the integrations here. We have these tabs. Obviously, these are missing things out. We have this. We have the FAQs. At least the FAQs are working. Uh, so it does a good job at the FAQs. And then we have this. I'm not honestly even sure if I should go ahead and actually ask it to do something else or even ask it to generate this particular page. Actually, let's just go quickly go ahead and ask it to generate this page because I just want to know how it actually does on a page that actually requires intelligence because even the pages that do not require intelligence, it's not doing a good job at it. So let's see if it can actually structure the content. Uh... Okay, so it's done with 
that particular page as well. Let's just quickly have a look at it, even though I absolutely have no hopes on this particular front. The website is there. Let's just click on that. And here is the website. The header is completely in the middle. We have some glows. We have this, we have this. Everything is that footer is here. So yeah, this is the page that requires some intelligence and here is your intelligence. So that's pretty much it. I mean, do subscribe if you, if you want to see more honest reviews. Don't be concerned about Bolt. Don't be concerned about these AI technologies. Do I think that they can easily go ahead and actually convert websites from Figma to, de uh, to development? 100%. I just don't think it can do it right now based on how crappy the integration is. Uh, but it definitely can. Even right now, I think AI is advanced enough for it to cleverly do things like that. But it's definitely not clever enough in Bolt or some of the other tools right now. But in the future, uh, AI tools would be able to do things like this. You just have to reform yourself. You just have to uh, be a bit more involved in user problems, understanding user needs, understanding the business goals, being more involved in things that do not necessarily require only digital skills and be a bit more on the empathetic side of things. Can AI potentially do that in the future as well? I think so. I think even that can be automated in the future with AI because AI can conduct interviews. It can understand users a lot more than you because it can actually get subtle cues just by looking at their body language. It can even at the back of their, uh, uh, while they're talking to them or do, doing user interviews, it can even synthesize information that it actually found on them all, all in the social media accounts that it has. It can ask even more probing questions. It it can understand their demographics a lot better because if a person is let's say living in India or let's say they're living in Hyderabad or whatever it is it can know the actual situation on ground at that particular moment in time if there's a conflict or anything and how that's impacting that person as well a lot more than humans can do because it's going to have a large repository of information so all of that in itself can actually be automated and AI can do that even better I'm not talking about generating websites and I'm, I'm not talking about generating designs. I'm talking about understanding user needs, understanding user goals, synthesizing them, understanding the business needs and goals, creating something that works for both of them. AI could potentially do all of that in the future as well, but that's going to take a lot of time. So for now, do not focus too much on uh, conversion and stuff along those lines. Focus more on those things that are going to be replaced much later. And once those are replaced later, Try to focus on things that are not replaced at that particular point in time, like, for example, maybe carpentry or something along those lines, because AI potentially would not be able to do that, not in the sense that it can do digital things, because it's really cheap to hire a digital assistant that can do UX. But it's going to be really hard to actually find a carpenter robot that's going to be really expensive and actually has really mastery on carpentry or stuff along those lines. But who knows, once robots become really common in households, even that's going to be easily replaceable. And then you can think about the other thing that's not replaceable. So that's pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.